What's up guys, Jeopardy Gaming Jaws here, coming to you with a kind of a different video than I normally do. Um, I just kind of wanted to do some reflections, as I'm currently replaying Final Fantasy VII. Um, it's been probably three or four years since the last time I played it. Um, tonight I was thinking back on my history with this game, and I remember the very first time I ever even heard about it. Um, I was at a Target, and it was r really soon after I had gotten my PlayStation. I was playing games like Army Men 3D, which I loved at the time, thought was amazing. Um, I may have even gotten into Siphon Filter at that time, um, playing Spyro, The Dragon. Um, we were having a lot of fun playing just games on different demo discs. That was a pretty big deal. Um, it was nice back then getting to just try out so many things via a demo disc. But, um... I was at Target, and I was with my dad, and I think some of my siblings, and I think we may have been on vacation. I think that um, it wasn't like a normal Target that we would go to, but I think we were on vacation, and we had to go to Target for some reason, and of course, I wanted to go look at video games, and I would have been 11, 11 years old, um, so I was in the video game section. And there was this older kid, he was a teenager, and somehow him and me and my dad got talking about video games, and he was telling us about Final Fantasy VII. And this kid was just gushing. He was so excited about this game, so excited to tell us about, us, about it. He was telling us that it was the absolute best game ever made, best game he had ever played. He loved it so much. I had no concept of what a role-playing game was. I remember really liking the front. I mean, that's pretty cool box art, if you ask me. Cloud with his infamous buster sword. And to think back to a time when this was brand new and something that you didn't even know about, you know, and just like the implications of the game um, case and what it made you think the game might be about. You know, like, my imagination just kind of started going crazy. Um, so I didn't actually get the game that day, but it always stood out in my mind. And, um, you know, there were these monsters on the back, and, you know, things looked kind of intense. You know, there was some stuff. And I think that... Um, you know, for whatever reason, it was only rated teen, it's not rated mature, but still, like, my parents had some hesitancy about me playing it. Um, and so, you know, it seemed like it may not be something that I'd be able to talk them into, so I didn't really even try. Um, but it did look pretty cool to me. And, like, how amazing, at the time, it just looked so cool to have multiple discs, you know? Like, most games were coming on one CD. And to think that this game had three CDs was really crazy. Um, so, fast forward, story that I've told multiple times, my brother-in-law, who's now my brother-in-law at the time, he was just dating my sister, um, he was older and let me borrow this game along with Metal Gear Solid. Of course, changed my life completely. So, it's been really interesting going back and playing the game, and this time I'm kind of just taking a slower plod through. I'm right about to switch to the second disc, so I've been playing for a good 25 hours. Um, you know, we're sitting at an interesting time because this game is about to change forever in our minds, um, in a way, with the impending release of the Final Fantasy VII Remake, which was announced. I'm really excited about the remake. I think that it could be really awesome. Of course, I'm a little bit nervous, and I keep just reminding myself that no matter what happens with that, I'll always have this. You know, I can always go back and play this game. This game doesn't have to change just because a remake comes out. Whatever they may change, whatever could be different. You know, it's okay if I don't like it. It's okay if I do like it. It's okay if I love it more than this one even, you know. Um, this one will always be special, of course. But just thinking about, you know the implications of what's coming up. Um, one thing that I've been definitely noticing going through it this time um, is how much I just love this cast. I love 
almost all of the characters, you know, the main characters in this game. Um, one thing that I really wish, I wish that this game had a four-party system, just so that I could bring another character along with me. It is so hard to pick two additional characters um, to go along with Cloud, because Cloud is always there, obviously. Um, and I usually, every time that I play it, I play with different characters. Um, I've actually never played with Tifa or Tifa or however you want to pronounce it. Okay, the names, by the way, I'm just going to say them the way that I say them. And I don't know if it's right and I don't know if it's wrong, but whatever. I'm just, disclaimer. Um, so Tifa has never been my favorite. I was always completely into the whole Cloud and Eris thing. And, of course, they have that little love triangle. Um, now, this time through, you know, and multiple times before, the first time that I played through it, I played with Eris the whole time. Um, which, of course, culminates in her death, which is pretty rough, and then losing all of the development that you have put into her. It was a really brilliant thing that the developers did where... When you lost Eris, you literally lost the time and effort that you put into, you know, developing her limit breaks or leveling her up or whatever, you know, along with the just emotional investment of getting to know her as a character. That was really a cool thing that they were able to do with that. Um, something else that I really like about this game is that the characters have so much to them you know there's just um there's a lot of joking there's a lot of you know smart ass remarks i mean cloud it wash it's such a it's such a nice refreshing thing to see cloud the way that he was in this game which he goes through a whole lot of changes in this game obviously he starts out kind of like crazy literally doesn't even remember his own true past is like that for the entire first disc and then has like a mental breakdown when he realizes that he's literally created a false identity for himself. And not only a false identity, he's taken on someone else's identity. Like, pretty messed up dude. Um, and I love that they don't show you that for so long. It's so cool to see what they did in the game with the first big reveal at Nibelheim where, you know... Cloud is retelling the story, which is completely inaccurate. But the first time you, you know, you watch it, you don't realize that. And um, it's very interesting going back, seeing, seeing how off it was. Um, it's really fun seeing the characters banter. Um, they did something, they struck such a nice balance. And I feel like games used to do this a little bit better than they do nowadays. So many of the games now are just so heavy, especially the Final Fantasy games. Like Final Fantasy 13 is a perfect example. Like it's just heavy, you know? And the light moments really aren't there to break it up. And when they are, it's, it's not... I don't know, it's not effortless. It, they don't feel like really alive characters. Um, I don't know. It was, they, they just used to do it so much better. You know, there was one point that I was playing today where um, they got through the Temple of the Ancients and they finally got the Black Materia and then Sephiroth appears and he, you know, forces Cloud to give him the Black Materia and everything is hanging in the balance, and it's this terrible thing, and Cloud is sitting there like, what have I done? I didn't, I don't even understand how he had that power over me. I didn't want to do that. And then you got Kate Sith coming up, and, you know, again, I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but he comes up, doo -doo 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 -doo. oh, this may be a bad time for me to join in, huh? <laughs> and that's, like, tongue-in-cheek because of the fact that, like, the previous Kate Sith just gave his life you know, for the cause. And so this is Kate Sith number two. And even the fact that they label it Kate Sith number two uh, is just really funny, you know, um, ironic. I just love that, you know, tongue in cheek hilarity. You know, this game deals with so many seriously in depth um, t 
tough issues, you know, like the death of the planet and, you know, the absolute raping of human souls that Shinra is doing just to keep the lights on, you know, like they're just so, so evil, such an evil corporation. Like you're literally stealing people's essence and sucking them, sucking the whole planet and the life stream dry to make money and to, you know, be a big evil corporation. I'm just really enjoying this game. Oh my gosh, it was so much fun playing with Yuffie. Um, got Yuffie, of course, she's a character that you don't have to play with. Um, you know, and she's just goofy and the dialogue is just funny and, um, you know, when she steals your materia and you have to chase her all over her hometown, you know, it's just brilliant. It's, it's so much fun. Um, you know, the Turks, um, are really hilarious to me. There's a lot of things I didn't catch before, um, about how they're, you know, they they take their job very literally as a job. And so their entire purpose of why they're out is to find Cloud and his friends and also to chase down Sephiroth. So, like, but when they're having a day off and you find them in a bar drinking, you know, they're just like, oh, well, we have our day off right now, so we're just going to keep on drinking and we're not going to chase after you. <laughs> How bizarre is that? Oh, my gosh. Other hilarious things, Don Corneo that mansion scene is just hysterical not to mention wall market where cloud literally has to dress up as a cute girl in order to get into don Cornelio's mansion there's a lot of things there that i'm really wondering how it's going to look in the remake and i'm i'm really just hoping that they kind of stick with the original um stuff i hope that they don't take away too much you know i hope they don't make it like so heavy and so depressing the funny things in the game really help flesh it out and make it um something that's just that you can actually connect to um man red 13 story nanaki his real name um was just awesome he i'm actually playing with him this this playthrough he's really powerful for one thing i love his um limit breaks i'm playing with cloud tifa and red 13 whenever i have a chance to play with them um, I've also never realized before how powerful Tifa is with her limit breaks. Those are so OP. And it's just funny because like I never really played with her much before. Because Tifa never really has spoken to me that much. So I'm trying to like spend more time on her character, get to understand her motivations a little more. And um, I mean, let's be honest. Her and Cloud kind of, at least they end up being with each other even if they're not romantically involved i'm not really sure what that is i didn't i didn't love um advent children all that much the movie you know cloud is just so down and depressed and solemn and i really hope that they don't do that in the remake i want this cloud i want this cloud back for that so yeah anyways um red 13's story of his father and believing that his father was this um, spineless coward who left them at their you know most desperate hour and then to find out that their father actually had gone and selflessly given up his life to protect the village um, that was just really cool and Red 13 I think is cool because he he's such a um, upstanding character he, like he wants to be noble he wants to be good he wants to be um you know to protect his village and um the the idea that his father was a coward and didn't stand up to a fight when he needed to the fact that that disgusts him so much just shows how much he really values that and wants to be that and um yeah i just really liked to getting to see him realize no my dad was actually really awesome and um the power that that seems to give him and then he continues with you on your journey because it's like the best way to try and save the planet if there is any chance so another thing i really loved is the summons in this game oh i must also know so i've been playing it with the um 
component cables on my PS2. And the game looks better than I ever realized it did. I have honestly always thought this game was pretty ugly. The character models are not easy on the eyes. And that's still true to a, fa to a point, but... I have to say that the component cables clean it up so much that I'm actually really enjoying the visuals. And I've always really enjoyed the pre-render backgrounds. And people that say that that doesn't look good are, I don't know, blind. Like, it's it looks amazing. Like, the backgrounds in this game are just stupendous. And having the character models cleaned up some really helps. Now, I know that I could download this and play it on the PS4 with better graphics, but... I'm just not into that. This is my copy of the game. This is what I'm going to be playing. I like it. I like playing the hard copy. You know, it's like sad to just have this sit on a shelf, you know, like for no good reason. Like when I replay Final Fantasy VII, I want it to be the original copy. Like the the thing that I played back in the day, the same exact experience. I like it like that anyways. That's just me though. Nobody else has to be like that. Buy it on the PS4. Play it. It's a great game. I don't know. I just love this game. It's really reminding me how much it's my favorite Final Fantasy that I've played. Um, and I've played quite a few. Um, I've played four. Every every one of these I've played multiple times, by the way. Four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, thirteen, thirteen, two, fifteen. So that's a good chunk of the series. I'm missing the first three. Uh, on the NES, and I'm missing five, which I actually own now. I own a homebrew copy for the Super Nintendo, which I'm really stoked about. Um, I just haven't got around to playing it yet, but I'm excited to do that. Um, and let's see. Yeah, those are the really the only ones that I'm feeling like I'm missing um, that are worth anything, anyways. So, anyways. It's just such a good game, and I'm really happy to be replaying it. I may have more thoughts at different points, and I may come back. Oh, man, I just wanted to talk about Sephiroth, too. Holy shit, like, it blows my mind that people don't think Sephiroth is a good villain. Like, the game does so much to show you how powerful this dude is. Like, they, they do so many things without even saying it. It's like, when you first see Sephiroth in the flashback... Um, him and Cloud are in battle together, and Cloud goes and does a swipe, and it's like 190 damage, and Sephiroth comes through, psh, 9999, bam. It's like, whoa. Like, that's mind-blowing. And then when you're chasing down Sephiroth, you know, and you, you run into this huge snake, and you can't get by it, you can't, as soon as you fight it, you're gonna just, like, be slaughtered. So, of course, you end up having to catch a chocobo to get past the water and all this. So you get right beyond that spot. Like, this whole thing that you've had to maneuver around, getting around the snake, with your three party members, by the way. And then you get there, and there's just, like, this huge, another one of those snakes on this pole, you know. And it's, like, this 20-foot-long, huge, massive serpent is just slaughtered. And you know that it was Sephiroth who did that. You know, nothing stands in his way. Everything, everything just is blown away that's in his path you know um the the scene in the first flashback of nibelheim being absolutely destroyed in flames by sephiroth like nothing nothing that he chooses to slaughter or kill can withstand him there's another point where i think you're on a ship and suddenly no it was in shinra headquarters you're in Shinra headquarters and suddenly there are just dead bodies and you you follow a trail of blood all the way to the main office where you know Sephiroth isn't there anymore but you're following Sephiroth's trail and it's just absolute mayhem everywhere you go um the dude is just a freaking badass and I don't care what anybody says the dude is nuts yeah and that's the other thing he's actually nuts he starts going absolutely nuts and it's just awesome. Look at those flames and his hair and silver and the long sword. Oh, I love it. It's not like I don't like other villains. Um, you know. Oh my gosh, I'm blanking right now on the Final Fantasy VI one. Um, crazy clown guy, basically like the Joker incarnate. Really good villain too. But 
Sephiroth, like, strikes absolute fear into you. You know, like, absolute just dread. Whereas, um, oh my gosh, I cannot believe that I'm, like, forgetting his name right now. <sighs> Anyways, Final Fantasy VI guy. You know, he's, he's like, goofy and laughy, which is part of his insanity, which I guess, you know, people could say is, like, part of what makes him, you know, scary. Um, and it's not like he's bad. Like, I think he's awesome, too. But, man, Sephiroth just, like, totally, to me, is the absolute villain. And, man, it's really hard for me a little bit with Final Fantasy VII. I feel like the game just gets shit on so much. It's like it receives so much praise and so much glory right off the bat that it's, like, now way cooler to, like bash the game and be like oh it's not that good and like oh the earlier ones are way better and people may like legitimately think that and that's okay like i don't mind at all if people think that you know other entries in the series were better but like to to hate on final fantasy 7 just because it's the cool thing to do is tough for me and um i just think it's it's so quality you know like I don't, I don't understand how people can say that it's a shit game. Like, to say it's a shit game is just completely ignorant. It, at worst, it's a decent game, you know? At worst, it's a pretty good game with some flaws, you know? Like, that makes sense. Um, so anyways, just some of my thoughts randomly as I'm sitting here thinking about Final Fantasy VII and about ready to go back and play some more of it. So, alright guys, hope you're having a good one. Peace.